Hello everybody, my name is Max Lützke. I'm globally responsible for mining aluminum cement in ABB. I would like to welcome you all and thank you for joining us to this panel this session today, where we will look back in 2020 and see how technology, innovation have transformed the mining business. We will also look a little bit in, into the future and see what this kind of technology can mean for the future of the mining industry. I'm pleased to be joined today by two very brilliant industry leaders, both of them with very long experience in the mining industry and we have very well good track records. First, I would like to join Chris Eriksson. Chris Eriksson has over 25 years experience in technology improvement across industries, mining, finance, and electricity with a focus of strategy and also development. Currently, she is the general manager of innovation and technology at Roy Hills. So welcome and thank you to have you on the panel, Chris Erickson. Thank you, Max. Further, I also have Mark Thomas, uh, who is the group manager of technology at Tony as Fosco Metals Groups. Have previously had a very different senior management roles in the same group. He was a group manager of procurement, information and service the group manager of infrastructure and services, and the group manager for finance. He has also over 25 years of experience in the mining industry with comprehensive experience in technology, accounting, and finance. So welcome to the panel, and I'm pleasure to have you here, Mark Thomas. Thank you very much, Max. It's great to be here. If we look back at 2020, I think what comes into all of our minds is the COVID-19. Even I think if we go further in the years and looking back, that is now something that we remember. And this COVID-19 pandemic have influenced all our lives, how we are working, how we are doing our active things during the days, times. And I think also have forced us to look out of the box, have forced us to do things in a different way. So when I look back at 2020, I can see that we know that the technology that had been around us for many years, we start to use that in a different way. And the safety for our employees is the key and will be the key in the future. So we have to set up certain rules, how we can work from home, how we're working in the office, how we're working on the sites. So one thing that I have seen as in ABB, where we're doing a lot of global project with people all over the world, working with different customers, is that they have actually enforced a different way of collaboration. Open up the things to think out of the box that I mentioned and to see using this kind of technology. The same way that we are doing this panel today, we are sitting in different uh, parts of the world and discussing about the technology. Another big topic that I can see that even before the pandemic came was yeah, that the industry and have had at the top of the agenda in many industries was how can we make the industry more sustainable? How can we actually lower the carbon emission? And I have seen that also those discussion was just starting a few years back, but during this time now when people not only have to go to the office, sitting back, you know, reviewing things, this collaboration discussion have been much more intense. We from ABB, we are driving the all electric mine. And together, now we have had this collaboration where we actually force, like the COVID-19, is not one thing that one can solve by itself. The same is thing with the environment. How can we drive this? Is things that we, as suppliers, customers, have to work together. So when I'm looking back at 2020, it's actually a year that we have transformed a way of collaboration, working together to put targets together and work this. And this was actually aimed to the first question. I will start with you, Chris. When, when you look back at 2020, what have had for you the technology and innovation that you think have shaped the mining industry most? Thank you, Max. And thanks uh, very much for that uh, insightful introduction. And I think globally, uh, many organizations and many industries have had to accelerate uh, their digital journey. Australia and mining in general, we've always had an innovative mindset and we've seen some significant advances in technology application into the industry through necessity. So examples that you highlight are safety innovation, such as automation, 
wearables, remote operations, mining of complex ore bodies, uh, so using machine learning and sensors, measure while drilling. Uh, and of course, the one you mentioned now is energy and environment, uh, use of solar, looking at alternative energies. The response to COVID really saw an acceleration in that innovative thinking and an application of technology out of response to COVID. And most recently, uh, Gartner, uh, which is an in industry research body, did a, a, a survey of a number of Australian boards and board members and CEOs uh, to understand well, what, what's changed? You know, what is, um, where, where are boards focusing on? And the biggest increase for them was accelerating um, digital business initiatives. Uh, and the other one was increasing the focus on improving operational excellence through digital business. So you can see it's front of mind for many industries, yeah. including mining. Uh, for us, a lot of it was around workforce connectivity. So using technology to keep teams productive, connected, engaged um, with colleagues in the wider business and industry, uh, quick deployment of collaboration tools, uh, and then moving further on to how do we use augmented reality and other types of technology. Uh, but it's been very much around the application of that technology as opposed to the technology itself. Sounds very interesting. And Mark, when I would ask you the same question. So, so when you're looking back 2020, uh, what, what kind of, say, uh, innovation technology do you think, in your feeling, have transformed the mining industry most? Well, I think, um, I think like yourselves, um, we were driven to become very, very mobile um, and using the technology to collaborate much more than we did previously um, because we had to, to survive, to keep getting better and um, keep producing. Um, so I think, um, I think there's no difference there and really that, that, that the technologies that have probably previously existed, but we were forced to rapidly um, take them up. Um, so that's probably been the thing that's really stood out. But, um, but in the last year, I, I would have thought um, one of the things that um, has changed in the industry is probably the awareness of technology. So um, people are becoming much more familiar with technology and that's, that's through experience more than anything else. And therefore their uptake of the technology and acceptance of the value it can deliver is, is, is much greater and much faster, I would have thought as well. Um, the other thing that that's probably driven, I think, in the industry is a real focus on security as well. So that awareness with it comes that focus on the security. And we've seen a lot of organisations suffering from um, security incidents recently around their cyber security. And, uh, and it's really become front of mind for everyone in the business, in the industry. Um, and I think it also, what keeps us safe at work also keeps us safe in our private life. So yeah. um, there's, a, there's a real um, synergy between the two there, I would think. And at that valid point, now what you mentioned last, I think that's uh, today when we see when lots of people working from home, we can really see, you know, the working life and the private life, you know, grows together much closer. So you're mm -hmm. definitely right there. If, if you would look then more specific man, for, for in your areas, where you're, there something that you would like to pick out that you say, okay, this had had the biggest impact in my business and in my operation? Um. Well, I think um, the ever expanding um, access to information so we can actually um, see what's going on, do our jobs better every day is really making a, a big difference um, for our organisation. Um, I think it enables everyone to see what's going to make the biggest difference, but it also provides a level of transparency so that everyone can see what's going to make that difference and really contribute to actually solving problems and getting better at what we do as an organization. Um, mm -hmm. I think um, uh, the other thing that, um, that, that's really stood out in probably the last 12 months in particular would be that um, everything to do with sustainability, um, you talk about um, safety, diversity, um, reduced emissions, they're all examples of things that are getting really, really driven and enabled by technological solutions. Um, so for example, at Fortescue, 
um, we're using the safety information that we've got in a much more detailed and um, uh, more encompassing way than we have previously to actually find learnings and look at things we can do differently going forward to make our people safer. And it's really making a big um, impact on the performance at the, um, at the mine site and at the, um, at the uh, mine face, so to speak. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think, I think just having that access and that, that immediate access to the information yeah. and all our teams able to use the learnings of the shift before to actually get yeah. better at what they do right now is, uh, is really making a big difference in our organisation. No, no, that, that's um, good. It's really thing, interesting to hear. And I, I, I say, yeah. So sorry, please. Yeah. Now the other thing that really um, probably stands out, I think, is is um, is just that I think as an organisation, um, and I would imagine as an industry as well, we're getting better at making um, technology value based decisions. So everything's user focused, and everything needs to be demanded and embraced by the business, by the organisation. Um, enable to enable it to really deliver that value and I think we're getting better and better at that as an organization but also as an industry as well yeah that's nice value points and, and and I I have to say I see the same also what mentioned that the, I think this I mean, we are forced to to do things different we can't continue the same way and, and also looking back and back uh, back to you uh, Chris uh, are there some specific things when you're looking back that in, in your operation, in, in your daily business, you know, what, what you will pick out would have had the biggest impact 2020? It's, it's a great question. I did think about it and uh, also very thought provoking um, from Mark as well. And, uh, you know, there's a number of things that had the largest impact, but, but I think um, for us, what it's really highlighted are areas that, uh, that we need to address uh, you know, as an industry and organisation to really accelerate that application of technology. You know, whilst, uh, whilst we're still using technology effectively and applying it, we're using data, I think that we could accelerate that more, all but in a security framework. And you see some other organisations across the world, such as in Peru, for example, um, which, you know, had been forced to go to a remote operations you know, in the matter of um, a couple of weeks to sustain safety and productivity. And, you know, they've, they've really adopted some of the technology and uh, also work practices that you can see that they've been able to, um, uh, to embed as well. I think also using the supply industry ecosystem more effectively. Um, so, you know, working with the likes of, um, with, with Osmine, Mets Ignited um, suppliers to, to really try to accelerate safety productivity benefits. We don't have to do it on our own. Uh, and, the, and the third one uh, certainly around is uh, interoperability and so is, is really making sure that with the technology we're applying that it's interoperable. You know, that, that there is no, uh, there's, there's less appetite now to have to spend time and cost integrating yeah. applications across the value chain to deliver an outcome. And we need to be doing it quickly at least cost now. Uh, and, and I guess the final thing that's really highlighted um, for me is, Mark mentioned the concept about diversity. Uh, we are increasingly reliant on our leaders in the organization to, to make better use of technology, to drive some of the change um, so that we do get the safety and um, productivity benefits. Uh, and leadership teams and organizations require that diversity of thought um, to be able to really mm. realise um, the the outcomes that we get from technology. Yeah, now that values and and, and I, like you mentioned, I see also this uh, collaboration. I mean, we we can't do things just by ourselves. I mean, it's, it's the ecosystem have to play together where where we are you know picking up uh, the different things and. And, and I also interesting, you know, the diversity is interesting to see. I had a meeting yesterday with, with a mining customer in Sweden and then exactly the same topics uh, they are discussing, you know, to drive. So it's interesting to see, you know, in Australia, in Scandinavian, around the globe, I think that those discussions are on. If we now turn a little bit and look into the future, uh, 
and 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 see. I know the the Australian federal government. You know, they have outlined that they will have significant investments in technology, in mining, to coming up you now the next years. What doors do you think will that unlock? And 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 where do you think uh, the future of technology and innovation will go as a 21 and, and further? And I, I'm open to any of you to to answer or, or both of you. So please. Maybe Chris, do you want to, to go and answer that question, or do you have some, yes. any thoughts? Sure. The, I mean, certainly the uh, Australian federal government's really outlined some significant investments uh, into technology in the coming years. Uh, so almost 800 million was announced, and 5.9 million of that is to boost Australia's influence on international standards. Um, and for mm -hmm. me, that's looking forward. It's whilst it's not a, perhaps a headline-making dollar. Um, I think it's a great opportunity to, to reinforce the commitment to uh, the government develop, supporting development of uh, standards which allow technology to interoperate. Uh, and uh, the, other, the other area is the commercialization of innovation. So really being able to support local development and suppliers um, uh, from government and industry and that includes removing some red tape and allowing for the growth of local development into commercialization. I think that would really help moving forward um, the acceleration of um, innovation technology. That translates into jobs as well. Um, so, you know, effort on career paths for personnel, the, the workforce of the future is changing. You know, the competencies are changing and we need to change with that. And, and you know, some of even the trades, the traditional trade certifications are starting to yeah. become less relevant as you start to blend um, mechanical mm -hmm. and electrical and technology um, support. So, uh, and then the other areas really around environment and the energy. Um, a lot of um, employing, particularly people coming out of university, um, there's, there's, there's many demands on, you know, what are we doing about our environment and sustainability? And Mark, uh, any thoughts from your side? I think I'd, I'd reiterate what Chris said, Max, um, in, in just, I think, um, that focus on innovation that's being um, led by the government is going to result in really um, purpose-built regulation that's going to really encourage organisations and businesses um, to adopt that technology and really uh, look at different ways of operating that make them globally competitive. Um, but also I think a, um, a national focus on something simple like cyber security um, will be another outcome of that investment in the technology, um, which I think is gonna benefit not just the mining industry, but business in general um, and the nation in general. Um, and I, I, I really applaud that. Um, I think um, the other thing that will really come from it, and, and Chris sort of um, talked about it was that change of skills and capabilities, which is how I'm coming with the uh, new ways of working. And I think the, um, the commitment and the investment in technology and the mining sector in general will make those skills and capabilities much more available to organisations to, um, to adopt and to embrace so that uh, so they can be globally um, leading the way in, in the things that we develop. Um, and then I think, you know, just in general, there'll be a lot more investment because um, it, it's being, it's starting at the top, it's starting with federal government, it's working its way down, there'll be investment in all those things like R&D and autonomy and data and analytics and all the things that are going to make us better at, um, at performing our, our businesses um, and better at doing our jobs. So, um, so I think it's a, it's a really healthy focus and, um, and it's a good future way of looking. Um, so yeah, I, I, I'd applaud that investment and, uh, and I think uh, the more the better. <laughs> yeah. Now it's interesting things with both of you have mentioned because I, I, that's something that I also see uh, traveling around meeting a lot of uh, customers globally and is that, you know, the mining industry sometimes have, you know, not that, you know, I would say 
it's sometimes hard to, to attract young talent, you know, from the university, from the school to start to work because you have this perception about mining. And, and some companies I've talked to, they say they really push into the, this now new technology because they are competing with other co uh, companies like, you know, IBM and I, 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 I software companies that, that really, so, so I think that's something and also one thing that you both of you mentioned, sustainability. I mean, the young generation, they, I mean, they, they want to work for companies that stand for the right, to rate rights and, you know, and, and, and driving that and feeling comfortable in this. I would like to trigger a little bit further on, on the, that question. So, so do you feel, I mean, both of you are based in Australia, so, so do you feel that Australia is on track with the rest of the globe? Or, or do you see there are certain gaps or challenges uh, compared? Uh, Mark, can you maybe, if you have any thoughts uh, about that? Well, Max, I, I think um, Australia leads the way in, in um, mining technologies and development and the adoption of, of those technologies. So um, I think we, um, we stand very strongly in that space. Um, but I'd agree with you. I, I think that the, um, the market for skills and capabilities is global and um, we need to be able to compete with all sorts of organisations and industries across the world. Um, maybe it's a little bit different right now because of the pandemic and because of um, the fact that uh, you know, COVID-19 has meant we have um, uh, more restrictions on our movement. But, but in general, the... Um, the marketplace will be global and we'll be competing with a lot of organisations. So I, I think that increased investment in technology, a key part of it is actually development of skills and people. Um, and I think that's uh, a really important focus because, um, because that competition is very strong. Yeah. And, uh, and Chris, uh, any thoughts from your side, how you see uh, Australia compared to the rest of the world, any gaps you see? I, I agree with Mark that we that we uh, we really, um, particularly in mining and other industries, uh, lead the way, and particularly some of the local startups uh, in power mm. and uh, some of the mining, mine, mine planning, mine scheduling. Uh, it's just superior, when, you know, and it's uh, it's. I think in that sense they're leading the way. I think encouragingly, and probably a lot through COVID, uh, you know, it's really encouraged us to reach out across the globe and. Um, break down some of the potentially perceived barriers um, around, you know, well, how can we leverage um, expertise from across the globe um, to increase safety and productivity? And we've certainly seen that with our automation project where, you know, we, we ended up, you know, having to adopt a local surrogate site um, to, uh, in, in Perth to run our uh, automation and uh, all of our expertise uh, was overseas and you know but we still kept to track kept to to target and that was use of different ways of communicating and collaboration now would you have thought we could do that before no probably not mm -hmm. um so a lot of it's about mindset mm -hmm. and confidence um to try something mm -hmm. different uh and to um to really explore that innovative thinking um again all but within the the appropriate governance framework because that's the only way um, you know, we really progress. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. From my side, I have to also see when, 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 when see from Europe, when we're looking to Australia, I mean, we, I see definitely Australia as one of the leading, you know, uh, uh, comp, uh, countries there in the mining. You know, you, you, I mean, you have a big, great minds, uh, uh, the right mindset. I, mean, I say mining is a little bit in the DNA of, of uh, many Australians. So, uh, and, and the positive thing, what I can see when, when working in this also industry for many, many years is that I feel a little bit more openness also from Australia. I can see that in the past was a little bit in you know, Australia for Australia and, and, and now open up, you know, to, to, to use things and, and to even to drive it. So I definitely, from, from my view, see Australia as one of the leading, you know, areas will, which will drive, you know, innovation forward. And, and, and a lot, I know a lot of other companies around the world, and I, I asked many mentioned earlier, I had a discussion with some Swedish mining company. I know they look also down in Australia and say, look, how are they doing things and other things that we can use here? So, so that's very interesting. So I think it's a very interesting uh, you know, future ahead of us. And 
And I also thank you very much for, for your for insight and, 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 and your thoughts about this and, and how you see the future. Is there anything that you would like to add now before we, we close this, this panel, Chris? No, Max, you've done a great job. Thank you for um, the facilitation and also the learning uh, from uh, the likes of uh, ABB and the work that we've done through with EpiRock as well. Uh, it's a great opportunity, a great example of learning from other organizations and industries. Thank you. Uh, and Mark, uh, anything you would like to add? And well, we... Max, thank you very much for, uh, for hosting the panel and for, uh, for inviting us uh, to be a part of it. But um, I think just, just to finish off, um, now as a mining organisation, um, I guess a lot, of our, a lot of our operations are quite remote. So um, connectivity is going to be um, a, an ever-present issue for us as an organisation and for any other mining organisations. So, so any advances in technology that we can bring about to improve connectivity to remote places in particular um, mm. will be important for us, but also that ability to um, that edge capability, I guess, is, is probably the, the key thing that's going to make a big difference. And, and both the connectivity and the edge capability will allow us to manage what's becoming a bigger and bigger um, volume of data that's available to us to actually mm. perform our, our business. Um, so those are areas I think um, uh, need a lot more focus um, going forward. Um, to make sure we get what we need, um, and um, and both are pretty uh, are pretty key to uh, to managing the new way of working. Uh, the other thing I'd say was um, just focus on the skills um, going forward, uh, and the skills and capability that people will require. We'll do different jobs. Um, we'll have different requirements for skills going forward. We've talked about it a, a number of different times. Um, but I think that's going to be really critical to us and, um, and being really open with the workforce to make sure that, um, that they understand the things that we're going to be doing and the skills that we're going to need. So, I mean, as an example, um, the move to autonomous haulage has um, allowed us to work very closely with the teams to reskill them and redeploy them into different roles because we haven't got as many um, uh, truck operators as we used to have in the organization. Um, and it was a great opportunity to be really open and really embracing about what's coming and uh, when and uh, what opportunities that also represents. So I think that's, uh, that's something that's gonna become a really important part of our future. And that, that was well said, Mark, and, and I can just underline that. I think uh, when we look at the great companies, uh, the difference is the people, you know, the people are the difference, you know, our employees, how we're working. So, so I think that that's a, a good way to, to actually to, to, to finish this panel. And once more, Chris, thank you for, for your time. Uh, and Mark, it was a pleasure to having you. I uh, hope to see you face to face uh, once uh, now we can travel around a, a little bit again and when next time I'm in Australia. But, but it also shows that the, the, the technology today make it you know, easy to do panels and discussions like this, uh, collaborate with each other. So thank you very much for taking your time to, to be on this panel. And I would like to thank all of you who joined these uh, discussions. Uh, and also please enjoy the rest of your time here on eMark uh, and your experience there. So thank you everybody and stay safe. Thank you. Thank you very much.